Hello folks, this is Sula once again. You're listening to another video for League of Legends and this one features Galio. This is taken from a normal draft pick mode game that we played and this is a full pre-made team of five that we have here. I am playing as Sona in this game, but this replay is not from my point of view. This replay is from Speaker's point of view, and so that is Speaker playing as Galio. And so we'll be talking a lot about Galio and talking about what makes him unique and about why we picked him against this champion lineup. Rounding out the rest of our team, we have Mike Zhang playing as Vagar. We have Pooh Master playing as Graves. And then our Olaf player, it, the long time people who have watched this channel will, will probably recognize his name. This is actually Young Diva playing Olaf, but he has changed his name once again. And he is actually Christopher now. And so I'll just use Christopher throughout the video so people don't get confused. Okay, so now a little bit about this. Like I said, this was a normal draft pick mode game. So basically the same thing is ranked, except we're doing the same drafting system, except that the game is normal. So it, we're not fooling with rating. But like I said, was a draft pick mode game. So we had first pick and we left Graves open. So that we could first pick Graves, which we did. Now that meant that their team had the next two picks, and with their next two picks, they picked Sion LeBlanc for their first two for their first two picks. When we saw that, we immediately thought, hey, we should counterpick this because they're going to be running a double AP setup. They're going to be running a lot of magic damage. So instead, well, so when we, as soon as we saw that, we had Speaker pick Galio, and so he's going to be playing Galio in this. Now, Galio is a counter to magic damage heavy teams. He's very good at that, and that deals with the fact that, deals with the way his passive works, so I'll highlight that here. Runic Skin converts 50% of his total magic resistance into ability power. So Galio is really good at sort of countering mage heavy teams because you're going to stack tons and tons of magic resistance on him and then that will get converted into ability power so he's not really all that useful if the team does a lot of physical damage stacking mr stacking magic resistance not going to help you that much but if the other team has a ton of magic damage you're going to want to stack mr and then he's going to be getting bonus ability power from it and he just it does very well against those kind of teams so he's a very solid pick uh, but he does work well against certain lineups so that's why we like the draft pick mode as opposed to just the blind pick so that you can actually try to counter pick and do that sort of thing. Anyway, so just to round out the other team, so you can see they did pick Sion LeBlanc for their first two, then they picked Karthus. Karthus is actually their jungler. Note the smite. So Karthus is actually going to be jungling, and then they have an Ezreal Shen bottom lane. The uh, No true support, no CV on their team. Shen as their other player on their team, so a little bit interesting. On our team, Speaker is going to be going in the top lane, and he's actually going to be up against their LeBlanc, so that's very strange. Normally LeBlanc goes mid, but because they're running double AP, LeBlanc is actually going to be in top lane. Meanwhile, Mike Zhang is going to be playing Vagar, and again, this is another counter pick on us. We saw all that AP, and we're like, hey, let's pick Vagar because he counters other casters. He's going to be up against this Scion player. Then down in bottom lane, I am going to be playing with Pooh Master, and we're going to be up against that Ezreal. Uh, up against that Ezreal and Shen lane. Now, one thing I saw was I clairvoyance and I saw Karthus at his wolves. So my immediate thought was, okay, that means that Karthus is doing the standard jungle path. He did blue, he went to wolves. So that means he's going to be going next to Wraiths. Then he's going to go to red buff. But instead, notice what this Karthus does. It's really quite clever. After doing wolves, he immediately came down here to bottom lane and he ganked bottom lane and he was able to score that kill on Pooh Master and take first blood there. So that was him sort of sort of juking me out. When I saw him right here at the Wolves, I assumed he'd just go on to Wraiths, and so I didn't ward the river, but he just made a really nice play there. So anyway, I just wanted to highlight that, and that was an example of somebody sort of juking with CV, me expecting him not to, um, not to immediately gank it too when I saw him at Wolves, and then instead him doing something unexpected, and so he was able to come in there and score first blood in bottom lane. Anyway, though, let's get back to top lane. Like I said, we're going to feature Gal in this video and talk a little bit about him. So as I said, the thing that makes him unique, first of all, is his passive, which is why you uh, will stack MR, which is why he's a good laning counter to LeBlanc. LeBlanc, the bursty AP champ. Uh, LeBlanc only has 12 AP though, so not a lot of starting AP, but Speaker does already have 43 magic resistance, and that's just going to be continuing to get stacked. So this is a terrible matchup for LeBlanc, a tanky champion who has lots of magic resistance, not a champion that LeBlanc is going to have a whole lot of success against in lane. Now, the skill that Speaker has been using the most so far is Galio's Q skill, his Resolute Smite. Galio fires a Concussive Blast, deals 135 magic damage near the impact location, and also slows. So it deals damage and slows. A very useful skill, and it's the one that Speaker is going to be leveling first. And it looks like he's going to use his teleport. Where is he teleporting, actually, right now? Uh, looks like he just teleported back in lane. Yes, we are running double teleports, probably more than we need. We probably don't need a double teleport setup, but we do have two on this team. And the, look at the damage on LeBlanc. So teleporting right back into lane has the health bots. Now, one item that you don't use, see, on a lot of champs, but which is quite good on, on Galio, is this Chalice of Harmony. 
So you Speaker went back to base recalled, gives you gives him magic resist, and uh, remember that does stack with his passive, so it gives him extra AP through that passive, gives the mono regen, and of course the passive that increases mono regen for the mono you're missing. Now on most champs, this is not a great item, but it is a very good item on Galio, and Speaker's going, you can see Speaker's just using this to, to bully around this LeBlanc in, in lane right there. There is her clone, her passive sticking in, and let's see, Speaker's actually going to get score the kill right there. So LeBlanc trying to harass, but 73 magic resistance, and Galio already just innately a rather tanky champion speaker just able to dominate that very easily so the chalice of harmony the early health pots using that teleport to get back to the lane and heal up while leblanc did not have a chance to go heal uh, all factors in scoring that kill and so speaker's just completely dominating this lane 26 minion kills leblanc a terrible farmer at 15 and she's going to miss a full wave of golden experience as this pushes to the tower so the one skill we've seen so far is the Resolute Smite. Oh, here comes Karthus. So we're going to come in to try. There is the Resolute. Oh, it looks like he missed the Resolute Smite. Meanwhile, we do have a fight going on here. We were able to score a kill on Shen, but now Scion coming down from middle lane. We saw him with the ward, but there's just not that much we could do. I actually used my flash to get that kill to polish off Shen. Now Scion coming down, ganking us, using his Ignite, and Pooh Master was on one hit, but I didn't have enough mana to heal him. And unfortunately, Ezreal's going to polish that off. I was out of mana. Meanwhile, now LeBlanc coming back to top lane. Karth is still here, and it looks like Speaker is going to get finished off in lane to the combination of these two. So they are going to score a kill up there. And that was probably a situation where Speaker maybe should have just gone back to base after he had gotten the initial kill. Probably should have just pushed the tower and back. Looks like he stuck around a little bit too long. And when uh, LeBlanc came back to the lane, they were able to get that kill. Anyway, I do want to have a moment to go through the Galio skilling order, or a little bit about Galio skills, since I haven't talked too much about that. Like I said, Resolute Smite, ability that Speaker's going to level first, slow, deals damage, slows, has a good AP ratio, I believe it's 0.7, not 100% sure, it's 0.6 or 0.7, so it does have quite a good AP ratio. His other damage skill is his E, Righteous Gust. This is deals damage in a line. It shoots out a gust of wind that deals magic damage in a line. And it also increases movement speed of allies that pass through it. So he has a slow and a speed up. So Galio's quite good at chasing as a champion. Pretty good at that. Then the other skill that's quite interesting is his W, his Bulwark. Galio shields a friendly champion, increases armor and magic resist, and anytime the unit suffers damage, they get healed. So this actually gives him some sustain in lane as well. Uh, it's not too useful early on in the game, but the longer the game goes on, late in the game, when you toss that Bulwark on yourself, or you can toss it on another champ too, but oftentimes Galio wants to put it on himself. Later on in the game, he heals for a lot when people are hitting him if he has that Bork on, and the armor and magic resist uh, buff is quite significant. It starts at 30, and I know it goes up with more points, and I'll have to see what it ends up with. Um, so we'll check that back later. And then, of course, his ultimate. Uh, people are probably familiar with Galio's ultimate, even if they haven't played him. Idol of Duran, it's basically a, an, a taunt that hits everybody on the enemy team. You can see the range of it right here. Channels for two seconds, taunts nearby foes, blocks 50% of incoming damage, then deals magic damage based on how much based on how much damage he was hit for while he was doing the taunt. Right here, now watch, I do want to point this out because this is a mistake I made while playing. Notice how I'm just getting killed there. Well, the reason for that was I went up here to place this ward and it was not a safe time to go place this ward. When I went up here, their bottom lane followed me up the river and then their middle came over here and I just got pincered between three members of the enemy team and that was a very poor, very needless death. So that was a major mistake that I made while playing while playing support there and I just wanted to point that out. So yes, it, it is good to play. This is a great place for a ward, but it's not good to die in order to place the ward. Obviously, that's not something you want to do right there. Um, obvious 101 there, right? It is not worth it to die to place a ward. So anyway, here's a fight going on right here. Here comes Scion trying to gank us in bottom lane once again, and Karthus was coming down the bottom lane, so that was a really nice gank that they had there. Scion coming down from middle lane, Karthus ganking through the jungle, and then LeBlanc, oh, I missed this. LeBlanc actually managed to get a kill on speaker right there as well. Um, I keep going back to bottom lane because that's what I was watching while playing, and they had this really nice four-man gank down there in bottom lane. One thing that you see um, good teams doing um, as Mike Zhang is pushing that middle lane tower and getting in some damage, just doing what he can. Anyway, uh, Christopher has gone up here and is going after that LeBlanc. Let's see if he can finish him off. Doesn't look like he can though. LeBlanc going to use her dash to get out of there, so not able to pick that up. And we're in a bit of trouble in this game right now because they're ahead 6-2, to two, and the real danger is in bottom lane. Speaker's doing a nice job in top, and Mike is doing a pretty good job in mid. He, he has farmed pretty well. Um, Vagar's weakness is early game, and he's actually farming pretty well. Oh, right there, look at that. Going to use his stun to just 
shield himself. And now Speaker's gonna teleport into the lane. There's the Idol of Duran. They're trying to see if they can finish off this kill on Sion. Sion's going for the kill on Vagar, quite rightly. And let's see, are they gonna be able to finish it off? There's a flash. Speaker's gonna flash after him. There is the slow on his Q, and there is the kill with the Righteous Gust. Meanwhile, in bottom lane, we did, uh, let's see, we did, um... Let's see, we did get a kill on Karthus, but Poomaster died as well, and they're continuing to put pressure on that tower. So there's been a lot of action in this game so far, and there's going to continue to be a lot of action, so I'm going to try to keep up with this. This was a game that had just lots and lots of interesting plays going on constantly on both sides. Anyway, we are going to lose this tower down here, however, and this has been the biggest issue with the game. They have just put a lot of pressure on our bottom lane, and we are in all kinds of trouble. See, there goes the tower, and now Shen's going to try to chase me, but he can't catch me. He's not going to be able to catch up to me. So the bottom lane is indeed the issue. That's where we have caused problems. They, the other team, their team has kind of abandoned this top lane, and Christopher is getting a lot of damage on here. Here comes LeBlanc, though. Uh, looks like it is going to be coming in here. So we'll keep an eye on this particular fight and see what happens. I don't know quite how low Christopher is here. Not sure how much damage he's taking. Uh-oh, he's, okay, so he has taken a lot of damage. Let's see if he's going to be able to survive LeBlanc's burst here. Don't know. Here comes Mike Zhang in. There's the stun. Are we going to be able to rescue this? Are we going to be able to save him? Nope, not going to be able to get that. But LeBlanc is going to get killed by Mike Zhang's Vagar. Now going up against Karthus, and let's see, does ha did pick up a blue buff right there as it got transferred first from Olaf, then to LeBlanc, now back to Vagar again. Dancing in and out of the brush right here. I did use Clairvoyance in here to try to help out. Is he going to be able to score this kill on Karthus? There's the stun. There is the, uh, there's the dark matter falling from the sky. On one hit, just needs to finish it off, and Mike going to finish off that kill really nicely done. Meanwhile, there's another fight going on in mid. Speaker going to take a lot of damage from that Karthus ult, but it's not quite going to be enough. So our Vagar player, Mike Sang, actually did score a double kill up there in top lane, but there they're continuing to put pressure and it looks like our middle lane tower is going to fall and of course this is a well I don't know if it's going to fall here but it's going to take a lot of damage and this is a direct result of us losing this bottom lane earlier because we lost the tower here that means that they can send Ezreal mid and put pressure on this lane here so again that's why you don't want to lose those early towers looks like it is going to survive but we've taken a fair amount of damage right here and there I'm going to ward and notice how I use the clairvoyance to make sure it's safe to ward uh, that's what I needed to do before you use CV to make sure that you're safe to go ward. And um, that if you don't do that and you just walk into your death, uh, you know, you sort of have only yourself to blame. Okay, well, there's been a lot going on in this game. Like I said, the biggest problem for us is our bottom lane has been in a lot of trouble. Poomaster is 1-4-1 with only 39 minion kills as Graves. That's way too low. Look at look, look at Ezreal. Ezreal only has 39 minion kills, but he's 3-0-2, so he's way ahead of us, and we've already lost that tower. So that is the biggest issue for us. Also, I, I, I'm not a big fan of this Graves build either. I have to say, Doran Shield Longsword. I, I really don't know what that build is for doesn't feel like the strongest build to me, but we just need Poomaster to sit in a lane and farm for a while and try to keep him safe while we're doing that. The other thing is this Scion player has been doing the current flavor of the month Scion thing, which is roaming Scion with boots of mobility. That is, you push the lane in mid, and then you go and gank other lanes. Speaker getting snared right there by LeBlanc, but he just has enough MR, the magic resistance. He doesn't take too much damage from that. So Cyan has been um, pushing the lane, and uh, he can push pretty hard against Vagar, who is not a great farmer. And then doing this, see, coming down here to bottom lane, and then ganking. We do have this brush warded. We've had this brush warded the whole game, but even though we can see him coming, there's only so much we can do. And especially without the tower here, uh, we're just, you know, we're just in a lot of trouble. And so Cyan's actually come down here. And they're going to score two more kills. So again, we had f we had full knowledge that Cyan was coming down there, but there's only so much we could do. Uh, even though he knew he was coming, he tried to stun Christopher there, but Olaf did have his ultimate running, could not be CC'd. Anyway, here comes a teleport in. Mike Zhang is going to teleport in with Vagar, going to come in here, and there's one kill on LeBlanc. Can they get a second kill on Karthus? Speaker going to flash out defensively, and there is the kill with the Vigar Primordial Burst, his ultimate. So Mike is going to score a double kill, and that was just a beautiful play, recognizing that they had sent Karthus up the top lane, used his teleport to jump in on a minion there, and don't look now, but Mike is off to a 4 1 1 start with Vagar, and he actually has more minion kills than anyone except Scion, so you don't want to see Vagar getting that farmed, and that is a good sign for us early in this game, so we were able to use our teleport pretty well. So it, it's sort of in big picture stuff, we're getting beaten very badly in bottom lane. Mid hasn't really seen that much action because both mids keep, you know, leaving the lane to go elsewhere. And then in top, we've managed to win top lane so far. Speaker, Speaker is only 2-2-2, but that LeBlanc is really doing nothing thus far. Uh, let's just check here real quick. 2-3-1. Yeah, I guess she does have two kills, but it just felt like she wasn't really that effective, and she hasn't been able to farm. Now, their team was trying to do dragon. We're going to come over here and try to challenge them for it. Speaker's teleport is up, so he can teleport into the fight if he need be. Speaker is, looks like he's going for Rod of Ages as his second item. Going to get a useful item for Galio. Uh, gives him ability power, which you do want on Galio. I, I have seen people do the pure tank tank Galio build, but I think he, I do think he's more effective when he gets some ability power, um, because he, like we said, the ratio on his Q is quite good, 
in terms of, uh, I think it I think it's, like I said, I think it's 0. 0.6 or 0. 0.7, something along those lines. It's a pretty decent ratio. And uh, let's see, you know, his just his other skills, his, his bulwark, his, his righteous gust also work quite well with more points, uh, with more AP in them. And bulwark, let's see, yeah, bulwark is already up to, with three points in the rank, Increases armor and magic assist by 60. So Speaker is really not particularly afraid. See, his Bulwark just went on right there. 128, 133 armor and MR. And LeBlanc can shoot away, and it's not really going to do all that much. So the biggest issue in the game right now is who's going to get this next dragon. Once again, see, use the Clairvoyance to place a ward. Just a little support tip for you there here. They're trying to come after us right here, and I'm going to be able to get out of here without too much trouble, though, using that speed boost. Meanwhile, Mike is going to score another kill. Used his burst on Ezreal right there, and we've got a little bit of a skirmish right here. Speaker does have the teleport up, so we're going to try to force a fight here at the dragon while we have Speaker's teleport up. You can see Shen is still around here, but we did just score a kill on Ezreal, and we, we got one of them really low. I can't remember if it was Shen or Karthus, but one of them was really low. So here we go. We're going to get ready for this fight, and at this point in time, we're like, hey, Speaker, you need to jump in here because they're coming to challenge us. So here it is. Here's the teleport in. Mike is up here. Cyan has gone on him. We are going to try to continue uh, focusing in, and we're going after Shen, who is maybe not the best target, but he is low, so we're going to finish off the kill right there. Mike is trying to run away from Scion right here, not going to make it out. Meanwhile, over here, we're continuing to fight Karthus, and we're going to make sure we pick up this dragon there because we do get this dragon we uh, when i was playing i was unaware that scion was still over here and that scion was still fighting against with speaker and christopher so i thought we were just going to back out over there but instead nope we're still fighting scion and a nice ezreal ult comes in and so now scion is going to be doing all kinds of damage right there's the stun he's going to get the kill on speaker and now Pooh master is in all kinds of trouble and scion is basically just cleaning up this fight here at the end of it we were doing well but he scored three kills there and he actually did get a triple. All three of these kills going to sign. It didn't acknowledge him with a triple kill. Just acknowledged him with a double kill. And again, that was just us not being aware. that I, I didn't even know that the fight was still going on over there. And so that was probably my fault for not watching the map. But rather needless deaths. We could have disengaged from that without too much trouble. LeBlanc Karthus then coming down here. A very unsafe position. But they did force me to burn my flash. I would have died. I saw that LeBlanc chain coming on me. I saw that silence coming in. And I realized I had to flash before that silence hit. So I was able to get out of there and escape. But they did force me to burn my flash. And now LeBlanc is again in a very unsafe position they're putting pressure on this tower but this like we said not a safe place to be this early in the game they're they're very in a very aggressive position here comes mike down here uh playing with vigor all he has to do is hit one stun and we should be able to counter gank this there's the flash over the wall there's the his ultimate and gonna stun scion and i'm actually gonna get the kill so i get the credit for ending his killing spree we would have preferred to get that on someone else but vegas can't be choosers in a situation like that now we're chasing it to leblanc and again there's the slow coming in from speaker speaker just jumping on leblanc using his e to speed us using his Q to slow her down. Gonna flash over the wall after LeBlanc. Very aggressive play. Can he manage to chase this down? There's the chain coming in from LeBlanc. There's the movement speed. Here comes forcing a Shen ult in there, and now Christopher is jumping in as well. So we've got a full team fight. Rest of the team is coming around Dragon, getting in here. Once again, there's that slow on Shen. That slow is just doing work, and then here we go. Continuing to fight, continuing to fight. They're going to ignite Speaker for no real reason that I can see. Continuing to chase. We're going to isolate LeBlanc right here. Here comes the Karthus ultimate. Need to try to survive this. And right there, LeBlanc's going to blow me up. Just use her, use her skills on me and kill me. But now our stuff's on cooldown. And oh, she's on one hit. Can we finish her off? Come on, somebody. There we go. Pooh Master going to get the kill and get double buff. So that was quite a long chase right there. And we ended up going... Two for one there. We did get Shen. I didn't didn't see quite when we got Shen, but now Scion's chasing. At this point, we really just need to back. Um, don't really want to fight this guy while he's full health and so many of us are low. Going to continue chasing Pooh Master. Uh-oh, Pooh Master's in a lot of trouble. I sure hope his flash is up here. Um, no, it's not up, but he's actually able to quick draw over the wall, and it looks like he's going to make it out of there. Meanwhile, while that was going on, Mike Zang continuing to farm in middle lane. He did a really nice job of farming. Vega are not the best farmer, one of the worst AP casters for farming, but he's at 127, and that's way above anyone else on our team. Plus, has the five minion kills, and he has finished his Deathfire Grasp, so that's only going to add to his ability to burst people down. Needless to say, though, this game's had a lot of excitement. The biggest issue right now is we have lost our two outer towers. It's pretty even overall, though. 15 to 13, they're a little bit ahead in kills, but we did get that dragon. I would say they're a little bit ahead because they got the towers and they have more of the map presence. But um, we are, we're doing okay here. One of the things that we want to do is we want to try to extend this game as much as possible because a lot of their champions are not great champs late game. Ezreal, very strong early in lane. He falls off a bit late game. LeBlanc is the quintessential I am terrible late game champion. Uh, really, really weak in late game. Uh, just you, just good early on at, at being an assassin and bursting people down, but she falters very, very drastically later in the game. Here I am trying to get away from Sion, but it looks like I'm going to be okay. Once again, warding, but again, that's why you use clairvoyance. You need to use clairvoyance to make sure you can ward effectively. Anyway, 
Mike is going in and engaging right here. He's in a lot of trouble, though, and LeBlanc is actually going to get that kill. So Mike's made a lot of nice plays, but Mike Sang's uh, making a little bit of an error in that case, getting caught out a little bit. And so now... Now is when we're in danger, when we're down uh, only four champs against their five, three in mid, two in bots, so and we're going to have to try to defend this push. Pooh Master and I are going to head down the bottom lane to try to hold this tower, and the other two members of our team, Speaker and Christopher, are going to try to hold here. But look, notice everybody disappearing from mid. Looks like they're going to go bot, so here comes the Clairvoyance, going to give us vision. Here comes LeBlanc. We see her coming in. Karthus over there, so we can fight 5v... We have a little bit of, of a window here to fight 5v4 if Mike can revive... Well, no, Mike's still dead, but we can fight 4v4 here with them, uh, with Karthus not being here. And there goes the uh, taunt. Not the best one from Speaker. My Sona's ult is a little bit early. Wanted to chain that with Speaker's ultimate. Karthus is not here but he's ulting into the fight gonna do a lot of damage and down goes Christopher I'm gonna get killed by LeBlanc but she uses her combo on me which is not smart and now Mike Zhang is killing everybody in this fight just doing so so much damage he's already scored one kill now we're chasing after this Shen there's the slow again coming in from speaker he's gonna try to ult out of there but it's not going to work speaker is going to finish him off and now that is the LeBlanc clone um, gonna get the stun on her, but it's not gonna matter. Here comes Karthus. Looks like he still wants to fight, but I'm not sure he realizes how strong uh, Speaker and Mike are. He really cannot push into this battle. If he gets stunned at all, he's gonna die. Right there, gonna get hit by an Event Horizon stun. Speaker is going to uh, use his flash, and there's gonna get another kill. Now on the monk, can Mike survive this fight? He's trying to finish off. Nope, not gonna survive. But again, Speaker, so much MR every time he pops his bulwark. Just gonna continue tanking this fight over and over again, slowing people over and over again. You need to hit that slow. Get silenced right there. There's the hit with his right Resolute Smite, and that's going to finish off LeBlanc. So, a long fight, long-running fight, but I believe, I think you'd have to say we came out ahead in that fight. I, it was relatively even, but I think we did get one or two more kills than them, and uh, just a lot of action going on on all sides there, and, and made for a very interesting fight. Speaker even going so far to say, you say, like, this is a really good game, and indeed it was. We were having a lot of fun playing this game, even though we were a little bit behind. We were enjoying this game a lot. Uh, just because there was so much action in this game. It was not like one of those games where pe teams sit and farm for the first 20 minutes. There, There's already been 38 kills in this match, which is high. And again, normally more kills is often a sign of uh, sort of sloppy play in a lot of ways. But again, you just look at the champion lineups. There's so many burst casters. Vagar, LeBlanc, Scion, all burst casters. Um, that that's why people just kept dying because there was so much burst damage on every side. Okay, anyway, there is another dragon over here, so we did want to come out and fight for this. Notice Speaker does have the teleport up again, so he can teleport into this fight. There goes the ward down, and it looks like their team is going to come in to try to challenge us. Meanwhile, Mike is going to score another kill mid, and we're just going to turn and look to punish this Scion. We're going to try to chase him down right there. He has had his shield bursted, but we're, looks like he's going to uh, looks like he's going to get away there. Going to make sure we secure this dragon. Let's see, still waiting on it, still waiting on it, still waiting on it, and uh, no, no! Oh, yes, Ezreal did take that with his True Shot Barrage, so that was a bit of a fail moment there, and I'm not exactly sure. I guess that Christopher did not have his smite up there, so that was far from the best fight we've ever done, and now, unfortunately, Christopher, in a bit of a danger, is going to flash right there before LeBlanc gets her stun. Here comes the the ultimate coming in from Karthus. It's not quite going to be enough. I'm still trying to speed up Christopher with my Sona movement speed, and I thought he was going to make it out, but then he turns around to toss his axe, at Scion, and I, I, I kind of feel like he could have made it out of there if he didn't turn back to use his Undertow, use the Axe Toss, but uh, as it turns out, nope, no dice. And then right here, LeBlanc, well, that's her clone, I guess, uh, not LeBlanc. So their team's going to look to push, but right here, Mike's going to use his full combo, and right there, Pooh Master's going to finish off Karthus. Right there, I get the Clairvoyance, and LeBlanc is going to dash in, but we know she's coming, and Sonic Q going to finish her off. Speaker going to teleport in from top lane, was doing the split push in top, and now we're going to try to chase. Remember, Galio pretty good at chasing, but unfortunately, he's going to miss on the Resolute Smite, not going to hit on that slow. And so we're going to have to stop and continue chasing. But again, they, they over-pushed a little bit. They they did get the kill on Christopher, and then they tried to push. But we were able to score kills on LeBlanc and Karthus. So we were able to sort of turn that one around. And they have a lot of pressure on their lane in top. That's because Speaker was top lane and then teleported into our fight. So so things going pretty well. An even game, really, really anybody's match at this point. But we were we thought we were in a pretty decent shape just because we thought a lot of their champions tailed off in the late game. And uh, not a huge fan of Shen. Just think he's kind of underpowered right now, too. Uh, we loved Shen back in the day. He was so good for so long, but just kind of a weak champion at the moment. <laughs> So right now, everybody's just kind of backing off, getting ready for, you know, the next big fight. Presumably, there's going to be a Baron fight relatively soon, since we're at about the 25-minute mark, getting close to that, usually when people start fighting over Baron. Looks like Christopher is going to try to take this tower right now, while we have the opportunity. Going to get engaged on Milo Blanc. Uh, let's see, we'll keep an eye on this to see. Oh, going to dodge that chain, so he should be okay. 
And he looks like he had his ult up anyway, so he could have ulted out of crowd control. Karthus coming in, but we do have this brush warded, so I uh, did think our ward control was pretty good. Now, Cyan going to come in here, but he's going to be stunned by Mike Zhang again using that event horizon, so we're going to be okay, not have any real problems. Let me try to look briefly at the item builds here. I'll, I'll look at speakers first. Still holding on to that chalice. He did finish his Rod of Ages, got Merc Treads. Merc Treads are like the item on Galio because, of course, not only do you get... Not only do you get the movement speed, the magic resist, and the tenacity, but of course you also get more ability power through his passive as well. Yeah, getting 73 bonus AP. Anyway, we'll come back to that in a minute right now. We were going after this Shen, but then they turned and started trying to flank us. Christopher going to run out on no health whatsoever, so we're going to try to escape, but Pooh Master taking kind of a bad angle here. If he gets stunned, going to be in trouble, and there the Karthus ultimate is going to finish off Christopher. Right here, though, going to stun Sion, and here comes the full combo from Mike Zhang, and oh my goodness, that Vagar damage. And now we're going to jump in there. There's the taunt on Karthus. Sona going to steal the kill once more with her... With her uh with her q and now leblanc trying to come in here but this is again an aggressive play from leblanc and she is in all kinds of trouble there's another stun from meg zhang and the dark matter is going to finish off that leblanc so we actually went three for one there the only person they actually managed to kill was christopher's olaf and now we are going to look to turn and go for this baron because karthus their jungler is not here and that means they do not have a smite so we don't have a smite but they don't have a smite either so we can look to come here and do this this is definitely a dangerous play, though. We do not have, uh, don't have an oracle, so we can't clear any of their wards. We are using wards over the wall here, so we're trying to give ourselves vision. When we're aware that Chen's there. Pumaster going to get in some nice buckshot there with Graves. I'm going to hit him with Q. But uh, we do need to kill this Baron, too, and their team is reviving. Fortunately, they do not have any teleports, so they're going to be slow at getting in here. So we have to continue to use, you know, DPS this Baron. And then for some reason, Pumaster runs off there to try to get that kill. Ezreal nearly stole that with his True Shot Barrage. Didn't quite manage to. Speaker's very low here. But again, a beautiful stun from Mike Zhang using that Event Horizon stun to stun Ezreal, save uh, Speaker. Speaker did pop his bulwark on, so did help him survive. And now we see we spot Sion trying to come here. Um, I'm going to cancel my recall here so I can help us go in. Sion is trying to burst down one of us, but there's the exhaust. And right here, we're going to use that Sona stun, and that's going to help us finish him off. So uh, just a little bit overly aggressive on that Sion going into the 1v3. I don't think he realized that there were that many of us there. So we've been able to score Baron, and we're in good shape. They really seem like they want to steal this blue, though. LeBlanc is coming back here, so we're going to have to just back off for now and then make sure that we have a chance to go heal up and buy. Speaker has finished Banshee's Veil. It just, again, another really good item on Galio, in addition to everything else that it gives him. 50 MR gives him another 25 ability power, so that's like getting a free Amplifying Tome. And right here, Karth is trying to pick a fight with Mike Zhang, but that was not the best idea there, buddy, because uh, as soon as Vagar gets this farm, then he uses his full combo. Anyone with AP is just going to get absolutely blown up, and you saw that there. Just use the full Vagar combo, and he just blew up instantly. Okay, meanwhile, Speaker and Christopher pushing middle lane, but there are three champions here. Christopher taking a lot of damage. LeBlanc, though, taking a lot of taking more damage. Unfortunately, that is the LeBlanc clone that's getting taunted right there. And you can see that's why nobody's even bothering to attack it, because, no, that is not actually LeBlanc. And you can see when that Olaf undertow, the axe throw comes in, not, not really going to do anything other than make that disappear. But still, we do have Baron. We are pushing this lane. We've got four champs here, and we've got Mike Sang's Vagar on the way. So we're continuing to push. There is the Shirelias. Tried to use the movement speed burst there to help us chase, but it uh, looks like we're not going to have an engagement. Looks like they're going to give us this tower. And Speaker continuing to get in some nice little poke there with his Qs on the enemy team. So at this point, the theory was, hey, you know, oh, right there, Shen going to get caught. Can we finish him off? Nope, not quite able to finish him off right there. We do have that blue buff sitting on our Vigar player, Mike Zhang. But the thought was, hey, we should keep fighting. We've got Sona heals. We've got Baron sustain. We're going to come out ahead if we just keep fighting and keep harassing back and forth. They don't have any heals on their team. So this is definitely to our advantage to just keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. Pooh Master, they're taking a lot of damage from LeBlanc. Is he going to be able to survive? No, he's not going to be able to survive. So unfortunately, we're gonna lose our AP carry, or our AD carry, but we're gonna burst down Karth, or we're gonna burst down um, Sion at the same time because Mike Sang able to use his full combo once again. It's come off cooldown. Now continuing to fight over here, we're trying to focus someone other than Shen. We don't really want to hit Shen. Uh, we managed to catch LeBlanc in front of the team. Now can we finish her off? Need to make sure we hit her and not the clone. She's on very low health. Nope. Going to dash out of there, so not able to get that, unfortunately. But we're continuing to do damage, and, and like I said, we do have more sustain than them. Another great stun from Mike Zhang, and then Speaker, unfortunately, going to miss that E. Not able to finish off LeBlanc. 
Shen dashing into the middle of the team. It's a very courageous play. Is he going to be able to get out of here? Looks like he is going to make it out. But again, we do have more sustain, as I said a minute ago. So as we can just keep extending this fight with our Baron health and mana regen with so many heals the whole time. That's why I'm staying in the back. I've actually run myself out of mana. I've used so many heals back here. Just I need to stay alive in these fights as Sona to keep sustaining the team with that and uh, our Baron regen, we should be okay. Now at this point, we're gonna ping, Mike Zhang's gonna ping us to get out of here, and that actually is a good idea. We really should probably just disengage from this fight, and there is another kill from Vagar. Every time his combo comes off of cooldown, he can kill somebody. Now here's where we're gonna make a mistake. Everybody starts chasing this Scion player, which is just not smart. We either need to back off, disengage, or just take this inhib but we're not going to do that. We're going to dive them, continue diving them under the tower. The Speaker and Pooh Master continuing to dive. They really, really want this Scion. Are they going to be able to get the kill? And yes, Pooh Master is going to get the kill, but it's not going to be worth it because we're going to suffer two deaths in the meantime. And like I said, that was not worth it. So we really should have just either gotten the inhib or backed out. As soon as we started diving under this tower, that was a big mistake. Now, can Speaker manage to get out of this fight? Let's see, he needs to speed himself up with his E whenever it's off cooldown. Here comes Shen, wants to taunt, but Speaker does have his does have his Banshee's Veil up, and with you see how much faster he moves when he's on his Righteous Gust, gonna be able to get out of there. No real issues. I was trying to come down to use Sona Movement Speed Boost if needed, but turns out it wasn't, and we're able to disengage from that fight. Still, we got a lot out of that fight. We were able actually to get three towers in mid. Uh, maybe we had the first one, but we definitely got two towers. Weren't quite able to get that in hit, but we got a lot out of our Baron push. We scored more kills on their team, got two more towers, and just put ourselves in a stronger place for the rest of this fight. So let's reset, look at the items. Mike Zhang, 1458 on Vagar, has his has his death fire grass, has an abyssal, I'm has an abyssal, has Rabadon's death cap, the abyssal, the magic resistance, useful for the debuff uh, to their their team's magic resist, and also to give him a little bit more survivability. Speaker, let's see, I'm not sure. Oh, speaker's going for Aegis as his next item. Useful because no one on our team had it. I have the standard Sona build, uh, Shirelia's cooldown boots, Heart of Gold. And then one of the thing that's different, I, I went for an early Negatron cloak because their team had so much magic damage, I wanted to be able to survive. So that's me itemizing around their team. And now I'm going to turn it into a Banshee's Veil because that seems like the most useful item to turn it into. Speaker, um, in the middle of their team, normally this would be really bad, but hey, with Bulwark, he has 260 MR and he can just say, no problem guys, MP, when he turns on that Bulwark. So yes, when, when it's maxed out, Adds armor and magic resist by 90, and yeah, that's a lot. So uh, he also gets healed every time somebody hits him. So um, can walk right into the middle of their team. And even though Mike is Mike Zhang is getting most of our kills, Mike Zhang, our Vagar player, getting most of our kills, you know, we need Speaker very badly because he's the one who's tanking. Oh, watch here. Watch the healing from Bulwark right here. Um, did you see how he got back like three or 400 health right there when the minions attacked him? So yeah, there's another 122. Well, that was from Sona Heal. But again, uh, Bulwark giving him the sustain, allowing him to just run into the middle of these team fights. Speaker really is the focus point of our fights because of the way that he's able to just stand in the middle of their team and tank and then allow Pooh Master and Mike Zhang to get the extra damage. And we're trying to chase right here. Speaker's going to catch them, but only Shen, unfortunately, just barely missed Ezreal and Sion. And I also just barely missed my ultimate uh, right there. So, But we're going to catch Karthus here. Karthus caught, caught him a little bit out of position. And now we're going to try to back off. We want to get out of that defile range. Here comes the Karthus ult. It's not going to kill anyone, though. And now Shen has gotten caught too far forward. Christopher is going to go down. He is going to fall right there. But this is still a good fight for us. We've managed to catch almost everybody. Now we're looking to focus on... on um, on Sion and Ezreal, gonna blow, to, blow up uh, Ezreal, and I get the nice clairvoyance over here. Do you want to give credit for that? Saul, um, Saul LeBlanc with the clairvoyance. Uh, so she is gonna blow up Pooh Master, but we were able to get the kill on Sion, and now LeBlanc not gonna be able to escape. There is another stun from Mike Zhang, and that is an ace. So we are going to take this inhibitor. Should be able to get this inhib for free. Uh, we're waiting for minions, even though we don't have to. We can just walk up and get it. So that was another really good fight for us. And once again, Speaker in the middle of that fight tanking. Mike Zhang blowing people up. Now as a Void Step as well. And 716 ability power on Vagar. Just destroying this AP heavy team. I don't even want to think about how much damage his ult is doing. I'm just in the back trying to sustain. It's very important I not die in these team fights so I can continue to sustain the rest of the team with my heals. We thought about going for Baron, but we, it was too risky because we didn't have uh, we didn't have Christopher with his Riggles and we didn't have Pooh Master who is our AD carry. So um, we couldn't didn't think it was safe enough to go to that Baron. We're going to go back and buy. 
and then look to fight for Baron after we have a chance to go back to base. But we have to hurry back here. We can't delay because we know that that Baron is out there. And if their team is smart, they're going to try to sneak in and take it. And that's exactly what we're do what they're going to do. Now, we need somebody to push back bottom lane, but it should be either Speaker or Mike Zhang because they both have teleports. We really can't afford to have Graves down here. Uh, I mean, yes, Graves can use the farm, but we can't have him not in a fight for Baron. And unfortunately, that's what it looks like it's happening. So he's going to be a little slow to get here. Speaker does have the teleport, so we're going to have to watch. I'm assuming he's going to teleport in. Still, we're a little bit slow getting here to the fight. There is the Vagar burst, just destroying Scion. Here comes the teleport in from uh, from Speaker's Galio. And now we've caught Karthus in the back of the fight. There's the taunt. And again, we're not stacking our stuns correctly there. Um, Karthus looks like he... Um, where did Karthus go? I guess he teleported over the wall. There he is right here. Now everybody's going over the wall. And so continuing to chase over here. Pooh Master has now gotten into the fight. Going after Karthus. We need to finish him off. There's the Buckshot going to finish it off. And now another nice stun going to finish off LeBlanc. And back here, Speaker and I did not flash over the wall. We're going to finish off the Baron together with the rest of the team. And that worked out perfectly for us. We actually managed to go 3-0. Even though the engagement was a little bit weird initially, the key to that fight was Mike Zhang, our, our, our Vigar player, just absolutely destroying Scion, killing him in one shot before the fight even started. And without Scion there, and with them having already tanked a bit of damage from Baron. Oh, wow, he... I just didn't even see that while we were playing. Yeah, Ezreal just ulted Baron, so they didn't even realize that we had taken it, I guess, just trying to steal. So anyway, here we go. There is the Shirelia's movement speed boost, trying to help us catch these guys. We want to see if we can run these guys down, and uh, let's see. We're going to get a, get in some damage on Chen, and it looks like Mike is going to hit on his stun, but uh, we're going to back off and do the smart thing, which is just take that tower. Now take the inhib. Their whole team has revived, so we have to be a little bit careful here. We can't just die the Nexus Towers, but they're another beautiful stun, and Scion be, get introduced to Vagar once again. Sona, Sona, dance on Shen, and wow, that is just three kills, and that is basically going to end this game. As soon as that happens, five on two with Baron, they cannot defend the Nexus. So once again, these, these Vagar Event Horizon stuns are just completely swinging these team fights. And then Speaker has gotten in some very nice taunts as well on Galio. And from this point, we shouldn't have any trouble trying to finish this off. There, Karth is, oh, Karth is taking so, so much damage. Grave's going to use his ult, but it's not going to be enough to finish him off in the fountain. I really wish that I had seen, quite, let, let, let's just get a quick check on Vagar. How much AP does he have? 789. So almost 800 ability power at the end of the game. And here we go. Full combo on Karthus once more. And Mike Zhang is godlike as he finishes off another kill at the end of the game to wrap this one up. So, wow, fun game there. A lot of action. Anyway, I will take us to the stat screen and we'll end this one here. All right, here we have the final stat screen. You can see how everybody wound up. Speaker finished with 24 assists, two more than me, so narrowly edging me for the most assists in the game. Speaker was completely unkillable at the end of the game because he had itemized so much magic resistance and their team was almost entirely magic damage. Very, very little physical damage. Only some on Ezreal, and even Ezreal does a lot of... Even Ezreal deals a lot of magic damage for an AD carry. You can see he had the Madrid's Blood Razor there, which deals magic damage. So Speaker was so much MR, you might have noticed that Speaker didn't die in any of those fights at the end of the game. And that was really key, just to be able to sit in the middle of the team, continue soaking up so much of their damage, and allowing the people on our team who had itemized for more damage to be able to, you know, do their thing. Mike Zhang, though, man, 21 kills, only 5 deaths, and the 11 assists, like I said, had 800 ability power, or just short of it, at the end of the game. So, wow, what a Vagar game. And I really think that this shows how we counterpicked around their team. When we saw their team picking Karthus, LeBlanc, Scion, so much magic damage, we tried to counterpick around that with Galio and then with Vagar. Vagar, of course, the caster who, who tries to counter other casters. It deals more damage on his ultimate based on how much AP the other team had. So I think that those picks really worked out quite well for our team. I think that I did a pretty decent job in this game. Died a number of times early in the game. Died a couple times in lane early on because we unfortunately we lost that bottom lane pretty hard. Uh, Pooh Master had a bit of a rough Graves game. Finished the, with the 10 deaths, which was a lot more than anyone else on our team. Looks like they were really focusing on shutting him down. And I, I don't particularly like this Graves build. I don't like the opening with Doran Shield. And I don't like building Trinity Force as your first item on Graves. I just don't think that that's a good Graves build. But needless to say, was still doing a lot of damage at the end of the game. And was our main source of physical damage, along with Chris. Christopher's Olaf. Um, so overall, it was a fun game, a really interesting game, just a lot of action on both sides, so I thought it would make for an entertaining cast, and I was able to feature Galio and Vagar, who are two champs you don't see all that often, not played too much, and they really combined beautifully in this game. Speaker, Mike Zhang doing a nice job. I would like to think that I helped out a bit with Sustain, and then of course, Christopher and Pumaster helping us out as well, but just it seemed like the enemy team was able to kill them in a lot of fights, and the other three of us were often able to survive, and that, that turned out to be pretty decisive 
impressive in this game as we were able to swing it in our favor. And as I also said during the game, the longer this game went on, the more it was going to be in our favor just because a lot of their champs were very early game oriented. So even though we were, we were really getting roughed up early on, we were just able to sustain the game, stretch it out, and we're able to make plays in the late game and do well. So um, just one final note. Again, a lot of people like to talk about the quality of opponents. So I'm just going to put the top ELO rankings, top rating of our opponents here on the side of the screen. So you can look at that. And, you know, if you guys want to say we only play terrible teams, that's up to you. But, uh, well, I'll just let the numbers speak for themselves. So anyway, once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you had fun. And I'll see you guys again soon.